and welcome to a new Free Tip Scout live stream with me, Free Tip Scout, on Tuesday afternoon with a big couple of hours ahead where we're going to do some lineup building for the midweek and also try to attack the weekend really nice and early so that we can uh, build another winning lineup to get ourselves in the line for rewards on Sorare. How is everybody doing today? Have you all recovered from the poll and giveaway bonanza from yesterday, which was absolutely insane? So if you missed this, stream from yesterday guys i can't recommend it enough check it out on the twitch page you'll also be able to find the highlights from yesterday's mammoth 15 card giveaway so we basically gave away 15 cards to 15 different subscribers on the channel and it was such a good vibe i had so much fun doing it and i really loved the polls that we've done as well i can see that waz loved them too he says he wants more polls so yeah that's the first time that we've ever done a stream like that in that format where we were basically doing knockout rounds of voting uh, to see who would be the players that would make it through to the final round of voting. And then we would basically then just decide from those players who would go out, buy and put into the giveaways. And I loved it. I thought it was so much fun. And I think if you guys love that as well, let me know in the chat uh, because we'll try to do more of those in the future. Try to integrate more of the polls. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add this team in. So this is going to be our team for the La Liga Amateur. We are playing uh, Soloff, which is a bit risky. We could potentially swap out someone like Unai Simon, who doesn't really have the best fixture here uh, because it's away to Osasuna, even though Osasuna don't tend to score a lot of goals. But we're not going to swap him out because we do need his L15 to 39. We could potentially look at a swap here for Molina. So let's confirm this team for now. And then what we're going to do is we are just going to quickly explore whether there is another better option of someone other than Molina. Because if we think about it, right, let's say that Unai Simon surprises us and he keeps a clean sheet, he gets a score of 60 points, right? Danny Parejo, we're expecting to smash it here at home against Cadiz. Let's say he gets a score of 70, 80 points, right? Benzema, we're expecting to get a goal here, at least one goal, if not more. Let's say he gets a score of 70 points. And then if Soloff plays and he gets a goal and then maybe gets a couple of assists in, or a couple of decisives, he could then get 70 points. The issue here is Molina because Molina could potentially just bomb on us here and get a score of like 40 or 30. He's like very hit and miss. He'll either get you kind of like 30, 40, or he'll then get you like a score of 70, 80. Maybe we look at a center back here. like an um, The other option that we were looking at here was Martin uh, Valjant, who's actually on the opposite team, right? He's playing for Mallorca. And I quite like this guy because he can give you this really good scoring and he has been hitting some great form recently. It's a bit of a tricky game, isn't it? Let's have a quick look at Play Sharper again. It's a slightly tricky game. They have an expected clean sheet of 32%. We've got, I've got Capetti, actually. I've got Capetti in the team. Maybe we mix this up here, right? Because his L5 is fantastic. Martin Valjean. Really good, his L5 at the moment. Hmm. I think we're going to mix this up, right? I mean, we're at the end of the season now. Um, let's mix it up, right? How much is he? He's 45 in his L15. But on here, he's 44, right? Let's mix it up. This is a difficult game, I think. Let's just bring it up on a sofa score here as well. So if we bring up Mallorca. Because I've been using Molina, and Molina's fine, right? But the problem with Molina is that even when he delivers a really good score, his good scores tend to kind of be 60 points, which is not often enough. I wouldn't mind the option to pick up a player here who can maybe get a six, 70 points. So Mallorca against Valencia. Wow. 12 versus 13. What a shocking season for Valencia, right? Really bad. What's their home form for Mallorca? Oh, cool. So Mallorca have played 17 games at home so far this season. They've only lost four. They've only conceded 12 goals. And their last five uh, games at home have seen that. Three draws and two wins. So they're pretty tough at home, actually. And then Valencia have only won two of their past five away games. They've lost three. They've only scored 14 goals, Valencia, away from home. We're going to make this, right? I quite like this guy. I like that over the past five, he's been up in this game. And he's a centre-back that has the potential to deliver us that. Like a 41, like a crazy score in his AA. 
which is kind of what we need. And we don't really get that with somebody like a Molina because Molina doesn't really have an AA game. He does have a really good decisive game. So four goals, three assists, AA of 8.1. But it's very rare for, you can see here, he's done it. He has done it. He doesn't do it too often. I think we take the, I think we take the, um, I think we do it, right? We could regret this, guys. So just keep an eye on this. We could regret this. We're going to take out Molina here um, because his, his remaining three fixtures are kind of tricky too anyway, right? Espanyol, Real Sociedad, then Villarreal. Not really expecting him to score that great against those opponents. If we have a look here, oh, he's got, so Martin Valjean's got Barcelona after this one. So we might even need to just swap him out or just bench him for that game. But then again, With the amateurs, you can you can uh, fester over amateurs for hours and hours and hours. It's not going to make any difference whatsoever. You almost just need to like put, pick your best players that you think have the best fixtures, are in decent levels of form, have good home performances or away performances if they're playing away, and then you just then just literally need to just hope for the best, right? Just um, cross your fingers, uh, pray the, the 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 stars align at the right time, and that's what we're going to hope for this midweek. So that's going to be our midweek team, guys, in the Liga Amateur. We're going with that, in, and we're going to have Benjamin as the captain. No idea whether this can win a card award. The prize pool for this is always the same. It's 200. You can see here. And at the moment, how many are there? I wish that we could see it here, right? You can't see the amount of people that have entered this here in this tab. It's so frustrating. You have to come out of here, and then you can see it here. Uh, so for the La Liga Amateur at the moment, there's 60,948. So we have really low odds here to win a card award. Um, we just have to hope we get super lucky, guys. So that's all our Liga Amateur. Let's move it on to some of the bigger, badder competitions, right? So Cap 220. This is, at the moment, what I'm entering in for Cap 220. And I think I just want to check this to make sure that 100%, this is definitely what I want to enter. You can see here that we've got another Mallorca defender here of Capetti, who partners up with Martin Valgent. And then we've got Unai Simon um, in goal, which kind of enables this team because Unai Simon has a really low L15 and he's a starting goalkeeper. And we do just want to quickly check that, right? So this is the team we're going to run with, guys. Let's confirm it. What do you guys think? Does this team have a good chance to win a card award? I think this team has an okay, like a slim chance to win a card award. We've got a lot of players that are mid-range players. And so if everybody starts and if everybody plays, then we should potentially get around 250 to maybe 270, 280. I'm not expecting this team to deliver 300 points or more. So if this team ends up getting a card award, it will have to just sneak it at the bottom end. As in like, we'll maybe come in with a tier five here, but it's going to, um, it's going to be nothing amazing if we get like a card here. I'm not expecting this team to smash it, but I just want this team to uh, give a good account of themselves. So let's see what they can do. Um, this is technically our underdog team, right? So if you, uh, if you are new to Surrey over the last few months, then you won't know what I'm talking about. But this, was essentially, uh, this is essentially a team that you would have run in a competition that was called Underdog uh, before Surrey made changes to the game formats, like back in January. So it's kind of like lots of low-end scoring players or low-end uh, average score players that you then hope can this just like explode all together in a game week to then maybe scrape your card award. So that's kind of the plan here. Right, so Cap 270, let's just quickly go back to this, guys. Yeah, so you guys know that uh, I have Ortega and I brought in Ortega early doors because I was expecting Ortega to start the, uh, the next two games for Man City and he did play against Chelsea. He delivered a great score. Um, I'm kind of expecting him, I'm, I'm hoping. I am, I'm strongly expecting him to start. I would be really surprised after his great performance against Chelsea that he then gets benched again. I'm not expecting Edison to play at all, right? Until it's the FA Cup final and the Man City um, and the Champions League final. You could argue that potentially if Pep Guardiola was feeling really, really sorry for Carson and that he felt really like generous for Carson, then he would give Carson a start here as well in the Premier League. Uh, before the season's out, right? But based on how Moreno played, Ortega played, I would like to see Ortega get another start, right? Because he's done really, really well. 
So I've already committed to Ortega anyway. I committed early doors, as I say, on Friday. So I was always planning on building this team around Ortega. And so we are not going to be changing that at all. If Ortega DMPs, he DMPs now. But I am expecting to start. And when you have a little look here on the, the expert, the expert's also expecting Ortega to start as well. So we can see here, Ortega's got an 80% chance based on what the, the expert here is saying, which is Rare Premier League. And then he's kind of put 10% uh, for Scott Carson. So yeah, Carson has like a real outside chance. You would expect Ortega to play here. And so I built this team around Ortega, guys. Let's go back to it. Yeah, I was, I was basically planning uh, on playing Kevin McAllister here and Michael Hoyos because these are two players that I already had in my gallery. And then when I thought to myself, well, I want to play uh, in Cap 270. I want to give Cap 270 a proper go. I didn't have a starting goalkeeper. So then I looked at who's going to be starting, who's super cheap. And Ortega, I could have picked up, and I did pick up, for £4.67, right? Which is crazy cheap. Crazy cheap for a now starting goalkeeper for hopefully this midweek, right? The only issue is, is that when I brought in Ortega, um, his L15 was crazy high. And it is crazy high. Look, 73, right? So then when I brought in Ortega, I played, let's take these two out, right? So you can see how this worked out. I had, um, let's take him out as well, Ortega, right? So I had uh, Kevin McAllister and I had Michael Hoyos, right? These two were always going to be played in my CAP 270 team. Let's just, uh, let's just refresh this so we can see who's got the games in the upcoming game week, right? I had a couple of options here. Yavier Aquino, Jordi Alcavar, Anto Grigic, right? In fact, to be honest with you, we may actually put Aquino in the cap 240 instead of Michael instead of um, Anto Grigic. Because can we do that? If we can do that, we need to do that now, right? Just whilst I'm seeing that, because it doesn't seem right to me that we don't we're not having um, we're not playing Aquino. We have, we've got the budget to do it. Let's do it. Let's let's completely improve our chances here to um, to hit a threshold. Let's take out Anto Grigic here. And let's play Javier Aquino here, like that. Yeah, that's way better. So Aquino, I think when I was looking at this on Friday, he, he didn't have a game, right? It wasn't showing up as him having a game in, uh, in Sereb, but they've since updated it to show that he does have a game. It's also going to be the same with Nicolas Ibanez. But uh, I don't think we're going to play Ibanez because Ibanez is, unless Ibanez is projected to start here, which I don't think he is, if Ibanez is projected to start, then that would solve our situation with uh, Marcus Pink. He's not. Nah, he's not going to be. No, he's never really a starter at the moment, but Aquino is. Right, perfect. I'm glad we spotted that because that was a bit of a mistake, guys. So we do need to have Aquino in here alongside Fabra, Fabio Santos, and then we will just brave it with somebody like Marcus Pink and hope that Marcus Pink actually gets a, a rare start here. This is way better, actually. Way better. Yeah, perfect. Right, cool. So the Cap 240 is fixed now. Like that. That's going to be our Cap 240 team. That is way better. We now have a much more realistic chance to scrape threshold here. Let's go back to Cap 270. Right? So let me just show you exactly why I put this team together and why I'm really excited about the prospect of this team potentially giving us a card reward. So we go into here and let's just take out those guys again of Sawloth and Gerard Moreno, right? Then we're going to take out uh, Ortega because we're going to assume that we didn't have Ortega, right? When I was putting this team together on Friday. So I had these two players here and I was always going to play Kev uh, Kevin McAllister and Michael Hoyos. Now, ideally, I would have loved to have run a defensive stack here for Argentinus Juniors, where I'd then play, say, Lucas Falauba um, with McAllister. But Lucas Falauba is suspended for this game. So we can't do that. And we're just going to, again, double check it. He did get a red card, unfortunately, in the last Libertadores game. So he is going to be suspended. You can see here that he's not projected to be in the starting lineup. It's going to be Kevin McAllister alongside Marco de Cesar and then Miguel Torren, most likely. So we go back to the team. McAllister was always going to play. Michael Hoyos is always going to play as well because Michael Hoyos is a beast right now. And uh, he has the potential to hit this team up into the highest card winning reward territory. So Michael Hoyos is going to stay in here. Then when I was looking at it um, on Friday, I was like, well, I've only got Miguel Acosta. 
I do need to bring in a goalkeeper. And that's when I start to think about, well, with Man City uh, potentially about to win the title, this was on Friday. I thought, what happens if they win the title? They're then going to be massively rotating all their players, which means that someone like Edison is going to be benched. He's going to be rested for the remaining Premier League games so he's nice and fresh for the FA Cup final and the Champions League final. That then means that Ortega is going to be given some game time. So I looked at Ortega and I thought, well, if I bring in Ortega, he's going to be a cost of 73, which is high. It's then going to mean that I'm going to have to work out some really cheap options here because if we bring in Ortega, we then have 75 to then spend across two positions. 75. That is hard, guys. That is really hard. That's like 30, that's like 38.5, right? Across as an average, across uh, like for two, two basically uh, players, 38.5 per player for two players. That's hard to do. So then I had to do some real hard scouting on Friday. And I had to look at who is a good player that I want in my gallery anyway. Who's got a great fixture? Who's in pretty decent form? Who has the potential to like massively explode and overscore their L15 cost that allows me to put them in here with confidence that they can then deliver us a score 70, 80 points. And the two players that I identified on Friday were, as you just saw, it was Soloff with a, an average uh, score in his L15 of 38 who's got a home game against Almeria and he's coming off a score of 80 against Barcelona. So Sorloff goes in there. And then we've only got 37 to spend for the remaining position. And Gerard Moreno has been a favourite of mine for a while now. And Gerard Moreno has a home game against Cadiz. He's got an L15 of 36, which fits just about in this team build here, right? Because we've got 37 to spend. And so even though it's the end of the season, and I paid probably a bit more than what I wanted to for Moreno and Sorloth because I'm only going to get a couple of games of utility out of them and then it's going to be the summer, right? These are two players that I have no plans to get out of my gallery anytime soon. I want them in my gallery for next season. So we might as well bring them in to help with the midweek and then see um, whether they can actually help us to a card ward in the midweek. And if they don't, that's absolutely fine uh, because we've then got great players for next season anyway. But 36 for a Gerard Moreno who's capable of delivering scores of 70, 80, 90 points and above, who has a home game against Cadiz is really attractive. Now, the thing with Moreno is that even though it's attractive and I had to pick him up with an L15 and 36 because I am expecting him to overperform on this. The issue is, is that Gerard Moreno has been very injury prone recently, which is kind of why he's not been starting a lot recently. So Gerard Moreno, he got a score of 72 on the weekend, but he came off the bench to do that. And I wouldn't be surprised if Moreno is on the bench again for this really good game against Cadiz, right? So you can see this is when I picked him up. And then there's been a lot more managers now that have clocked on to Gerard Moreno. And his price has been increasing a little bit. So we still got him a decent price here. Surprised to see this one here for £7.20. That's an incredible pickup from um, that manager there. So I thought I already got a really decent deal on him for £8. And I was actually expecting his price to go into the £10 range, which he kind of has, right? So I'm still happy that we locked him in for that. But yeah, this guy here, picking him up for £7.20. Wow. Um, somebody sold him far too cheap there. So Moreno, projected at 75% to start in this fixture. 24% believe he's going to be on the bench. He's got a great fixture here, of course, at home. And Moreno, if you didn't know, which I'm sure a lot of you guys do, this is the type of player that we're getting. We're getting this type of player here that can just absolutely smash scores of 70, 80 points. And he's an L15 cost of 36. And I, this is the type of player that is perfect for the cat mode. Where you pick up a player that's capable of this, 80 scores, 90 scores, and you pick him up for a cost of 30 or basically sub 40 scores, right? In his L15. Incredible. Big overperformer, big overachiever potentially. Now. If we have a quick look at the Game Week Center here, what you'll also spot, guys, in the Game Week Center is that, again, this is the Game Week Center for 374. And this is showing us, by default, the teams that have the highest win percentage for the midweek, right? As in the teams that have the best chance, potentially, on paper to really deliver an incredible result because their opponent is considered to be significantly weaker. Real Sociedad were third. If we take it down here, Rangers, you'd expect to be here at two with a home game against Hearts. 
Celtic with an away game against Hibs. And then look at this here. Villarreal are fifth in this table. They have a home game against Cadiz. They have a 64% chance for a win. There is a 28% chance for three goals scored. On paper, Welcome. these two home games here of Real Sociedad and Villarreal look amazing and look like they give you the potential for either a Sorloth or a Gerard Moreno to absolutely smash it against his opponents. And that's what we're going to be hoping for, guys, by then putting in Moreno here. We're going to be hoping for Moreno to get a start. And we're going to quickly check this on Play Sharper to see what the expert's saying. I'm not expecting Moreno to be projected to start here, but you could be surprised, right? Gerard Moreno, look, 50%. So it's a 50-50, but it's a 50-50 that I'm willing to take for a player of his caliber with an L15 to 36, which when I'd done some scouting on Friday, I honestly just couldn't find someone else that I really fancied who had a great fixture and is a player of this quality. So we're going to take the risk here by playing Moreno. And even if he comes off the bench, I would not be surprised if he gets involved in a decisive. Um, but if he starts and if Soloff starts in these games, we could get some great scores from these guys. And this could be, again, I'm going to say it right, a bit, probably a bit, um, a bit ballsy to, to say it, maybe a little bit reckless to say it right. But I'm going to say it anyway, this team here has the potential to be a sleeper winner in Cap 270. It really does. We've got all players here that are players a little bit off the beaten track, apart from probably, say, Kevin McAllister, who a lot of managers know about now. Not many managers still probably know about Michael Hoyos, even though I think if you're on these streams, you probably do by now. And then Sorloff, of course, managers know about, but do many managers really know that you can play a Sorloff for the midweek with his low L15? So is Gerard Moreno. So these two guys here are kind of cheat codes, really. Here's the recap of the winners here today, guys. Right, so the recap is... Let's have a quick look here. Who's won here? So <laughs> I said Forced Cat, and it's not for <laughs> Forced Cat. It's actually Forest Cat 77. So number 16 was Forest Cat 77, who wins a Robin Molon, right? Then we had number 67, Simo uh, underscore Joke, or Jockle. So Simo wins a Stephen O'Donnell, and he was number 67. We also then had number 78, King underscore Divock, who wins a Lucas Froda. So congratulations to him too. And then we had number 203, who was Agnesta 14, uh, who wins Ludovic Ajork. And then last but not least, we have number 286, which was Pistrol underscore, who wins Hayden Colson. So those were the five winners from today's uh, giveaway for hitting 300 subs, guys. And as I say, we're going to have another big giveaway when we hit 350 subs. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you want to take part in these live stream giveaways, you also want to just support the growth of the channel. You want to be part of this amazing community and you don't want to receive any ads on the stream, which you won't if you're a subscriber to the channel. Plus, you want to get access to the new upcoming Discord. Then feel free to subscribe. You'll be able to subscribe using the link from the Nightbot in the chat. Plus, there's also a link pinned to the top of the chat that allows you to subscribe with Amazon Prime using your Amazon Prime account. And that's an absolutely free sub that you get each month as part of your Amazon Prime member. Thank you so much, guys. I'll be in touch with the winners from today's stream as well, the five winners for the 300 sub giveaway. Uh, thank you so much for the incredible support as always, guys. Um, I'll see you in a couple of hours. Uh, go get some food. And then we're going to go and see in 8.30 who wins this Caspianka. So I will see you all then. Thank you so much, guys.